everybody, it's Catherine from Art Paper Joy and I am here, still here, December Ember, day 20 and the prompts today are grunge and snippet roll I'm going to grunge up my background paper which is this page that I've taken out of my journal it's one of my own printables and I've printed it on sort of cardstock about 200 GSM so it's quite sturdy and it's the very first page in my journal I've got this little tab that I made yesterday and I'm going to fold that back so it doesn't get too grunged but if it gets a bit grunged it doesn't matter and the same thing for my page tab on here because this page is where I've got my two cards with the vellum so I've taken those out obviously and I've folded back the page tab but you know, if things come through the page and this gets some extra grunge on it, I'm not really going to worry about it. <laughs> I'm wearing gloves, as you can see, because my hands get into a state. I don't know how Louisa and Barbara do it, because their hands always look absolutely immaculate. So I've got my gloves on. I've got my metal ruler and the first thing I'm going to do is rough up the edges of the pages a bit more than they are already. I'm going to concentrate the distressing on this side and just extend it slightly beyond the middle. So I'm also going to do some little tears for extra grunginess and actually tear some bits out. I can do that without tearing my gloves off. <laughs> and I'm just folding some sort of randomly and making them as messy as possible just on those edges now when I think of grunginess I usually think of coffee dyeing but I've decided just to use my inks and other materials like that so I've got my vintage photo which is my pad and I'm going to start with that and just sort of colour up the edges and then I'm going to move on and use my re-inkers for some extra colour and I'm going to apply those, I've got my frayed burlap and I've got my tea dye and I'm going to apply that with a sponge. pretty good start definitely got more grunginess than there was before so the next step up is to use some tea dye and I'm going to put the re-inker just a few drops in my paint palette my ceramic one and this will wash clean of this distress ink because it's all water soluble and then I'm going to get my sponge and really get in there I'm going to dab it first of all to see how dark it is and what I get. Oh yeah, that's quite good actually. And I'm going to start at the edges and work my way in. my snippet roll on here it's going to go on this section so I'm going to concentrate on the grunginess to be the background to that but I don't really need to do quite as much in this area I'm 
Right, now it's the turn of frayed burlap, which is darker still. It can go in the same well as the palette, there's no reason for it not to. And then I'm going straight in this time. Just going to check the other side. Yeah, a little bit's come through, but that's not too bad and there's nothing on the other side. And so far my lace has survived as well. If I get a bit of grungy lace, I don't think that'll matter. I've then got some water-based block printing ink, which I got in a kit for block printing that I've never used. I'm going to put that in a different well because I think it's quite a bit thicker and I might need to add some water to it so I've got my spray bottle and I'm just going to practice doing some mark making because I want some streaks but I don't want heavy lines that's about the right sort of thing that I want. So I'm going to sort of go on like this. Try and do it as unevenly as possible. And I'm going to leave it at that. I think that is super, super grungy. These are the papers and bits that I've chosen for my snippet roll to have this first ever go and good news is I'm not attempting to film this. <laughs> Instead I'm going to link in the description box below to two or three videos that show you exactly how to do it. I know one of them is Barbara's, I've watched a video of Barbara showing how to do this. And there probably are many, many more. So if you want to search on YouTube, that will be by far the best way to find out how to do this. I've chosen book pages which I've dyed and coffee dyed book pages. I've chosen some of my paper that I had that I covered in mica that I had underneath when I was doing those mica related spreads. I've torn up some of that third postcard that I made for one of the spreads that didn't work out. I've got some coffee dyed tissue paper, well it's tracing paper actually. And I've got some of my buttons which I might use this way round, or not that way round, but that way round, that way round, maybe the book page side, not sure yet. Um, and other odd bits of paper. I've also got some of my Angelina sheet that I did right back on Defemember day one. <laughs> and I thought, well, that might work, it might not. I've got some little bits of quite sheer cotton fabric from a sample. And I'm just going to see what I can do with it. I've got the sewing machine out, it's still threaded and it's got th cream thread, so that's what I'm going to use. So I will see you on the other side. I've just been doing a little happy dance around my craft room because this is my first attempt. It's probably beginner's luck. But wow, I've made a snippet roll. Well, it's not actually a roll, it's a strip. <laughs> it's not very long, but I don't need it to be very long because it's just going on this page. And yeah, it was easy. I didn't even glue the papers together. I just kept feeding them and going really, really slowly. I even managed to get some of those little coin toppers on and my Angelina paper, well, my Angelina sheet, and my mica paper, the fabric, it worked like a charm. Oh wow, well, you know, I'm, I'm now going to fall headlong down another rabbit hole, aren't I? So I've got a snippet strip and I thought I'll do a little rolling of it. 
in places because it's not too sturdy and I think if I do roll it up and sort of fold it up more like it, more like it really I can make something that's about the height of the journal but that will stick out a little bit at the top thought that would be quite nice and you know I could have it either way it doesn't really matter but I think probably I prefer it that way I'm just going to check the height of it against this ruler. Um, so yes, it's about 23 and the height of the page is 21. So that is just about perfect. And all I have to do is decide which will be the top and which will be the bottom. And it will become a belly band. To give it a bit more strength, I think I'm now going to add some tape. And I'm going to use a piece of my homemade washi tape, which is actually masking tape that I've painted on and stamped on and everything like that. So I'm going to use a few pieces of this and then if it shows through, at least there'll be some colour and some interest. So I'm just going to paste that down in the middle and then I'm going to flip this over to the top. And then flip that down like that. And think what I'll then do is add some glue along the middle of the tape and then that will hold the whole lot together. And that will be my snippet roll belly band. The page background is now all dry and the snippet roll glue is dry. I'm sure you're not supposed to put glue on a snippet roll but never mind. <laughs> I've made this belly band and now I've just got to decide which way round I want it. Oh it's a shame to cover up the wrong way round but what can you do? I think what's going to decide it is what the words say. It says, in her dream. I quite like that. I think that has got to be the side. So I'm going to overlap it on, I think, both sides of the page like that. And it's going to go about there. And then I can actually use it as a belly band. It will get things in there. How am I going to attach this? How, how, how am I going to attach this? Am I going to be really brave and sew it on? <laughs> Again, I'm not going to film this, <laughs> but if it works, I'll see you on the other side again. Second thought, <laughs> I think I need to just grunge up the edges of these papers a little bit. I don't want them to blend into the background, but they are looking pretty sort of plain at the moment. So I'm just getting my vintage photo and my applicator brush, and I'm just going to see if I can get those edges looking a bit more vintage. I think this ink pad is dried out. I haven't got a re-ink for it and I think it's sort of on its last legs. So I'm just going to use it direct from the pad just to get something along the edges. Right, I think that's perfect. There's a little bit of vintage and a little bit of age going on but it doesn't take away from the contrast that I've fixed into the snippet roll and there's even some of this mica and glitteriness going on. Right, I'll see you on the other side. And here is the finished page in place in my journal. 
the grungy background, the snippet roll, my first ever, and I've cut the Defemember heading from my prompt list because I've printed out a new one and put it in, and I've made it into a little tag. So it's obvious, if I were ever to forget, when I open this journal, what it's all about. I am so pleased with this. Yesterday, with the fabric page tabs, I thought that was going to be a breeze and it was going to take no time at all. And I thought the snippet roll was going to be really difficult. But in fact, this is one of the quickest pieces of ephemera that I've made in the whole challenge. See you tomorrow.